everybody. Today we'll be retrieving the last asset that we came from the photos library, which is live photos. So the user will be able to pick the live photo. It will display with a preview. When we long press on it, we will get the, yeah, the live photo animation. And we will also make sure to maintain the previous capability, which was the user being able to select still images. Let's start by creating the view that will present a live photo. This is provided by the Photos UI library. And again, there's no Swift UI view for this. There's only a UI kit equivalent. So what we will do is use UI view representable. For this view, what we will need to present is a PH live photo. This will be provided by the PH Picker view controller. And what we're going to use to present this live photo is a PH live photo view. So that's a view that you instantiate, you set the live photo property, and then you return it. There's also a feature that you can start the playback with. We will select, uh, no, not full, hint, which will display part of the live photo animation to the user as soon as we present this view. Okay, now back to the canvas view. Here we will add a third media item type, which will be live photo, and it will pass a PH live photo. As I mentioned in the previous video, we don't need this video player view that we are using to present an AV player view controller. This was a mistake on my part. AV kit does provide a Swift UI view that we can use here. So we will get rid of this class, the video player view. And instead we'll use the video player view, which you pass in an AV player, just like we did with AV player view controller. And we create that with a URL and that's it. We didn't need any UI view representable controller for this. Now moving on to our live photos. For that case, we will use the view that we just created. I checked for this one, we do need a UI view representable. With the view ready, now what we are missing is the view model being capable of retrieving that PH live photo from the PH picker result. So what we will do is check with the result, with the item provider in the result actually, if it can load a PH live photo. And if it does, then we will retrieve the PH live photo. That will be the first condition that we are checking. We load a live photo just like we did with UI image. We pass the class name, then inside we get an object and we see if we can cast it. And if so, then in the main queue, we append it to our items. Let's try running this. So let's select our picker, select two images. These are live photos when I took them. And there we have it with the hint. Let's long press on the first one. There we have the animation, same on the second one. Uh, let's try taking a picture to see if we can display images alongside this. And yeah, there we have it. An image there and two live photos. So our views do work. Okay, now we don't want to force the user to always uh, be picking live photos. So we will modify our view model so that the user can decide if they want to retrieve a still image or the live photo. We'll do that with a Boolean inside of the view model. And the only difference here is that we will check, we will process a live photo from the PH picker result only if the user wants to process the live photo. If not, it will be processed as a UI image, which is what we have been doing for the past two lessons, by the way. And how will we make the user uh, decide this? We will use an action sheet. Oh, 
Okay, I didn't know this. The action sheet is deprecated in iOS 15. Instead, we need to use confirmation dialog. So yeah, let's use that. This is not that different from, from action sheet. So let's add the text and let's create a Boolean variable to present it. And let's add buttons to it. Normal buttons, by the way, unlike action sheet, which needed action sheet that button, this is just the typical shift UI button that, that you normally use. So now, instead of it being in the navigation bar button, in this uh, confirmation dialog buttons is where we will toggle showing the um, pH picker view controller and where we will set the property in the view model to see what it processes, either UI image or pH live photo. And the navbar just toggles the presenting the confirmation dialog on and off. Let's try running. Okay, tap. okay, we have now the confirmation dialog. We aren't showing the title, so maybe we missed setting something. But let's choose on the photo here. Okay, nothing happened. It's nothing bad happened, I mean. It's showing still images. All good here. Now let's select live photo. Tap select two images and all good. Our confirmation dialog is working as expected. We just need to polish it not showing the title. And actually we could use a description as well. Okay, let's see why our title wasn't showing. Let's see the documentation, title, visibility. Okay, then we need to change that. It's either automatic or hidden by default. We want it to be visible. Okay, and now we also wanted a message, which isn't appearing. Let's see. Hmm. I don't believe we can add a message. Let's go to the implementation of the confirmation dialog in Swift UI. You do this by uh, selecting Control Command and clicking. That'll go directly to the declaration. So yes, apparently there is no message closure here. But let's see the other declarations of the confirmation dialog method. No, no, and aha. There is a closure at the end where we return another view. It's, it's yes, it's a view builder. So now because we're using two trailing closures, the first one was the actions and the next one is the messages. So we declare that like this. We need to name the second trailing closure. And in this closure, we just need to pass a text. Let's try now. And there we have our title and our message in the confirmation dialog. And nothing else was changed. We did it. And that was all. We remediated our unnecessary use of UI view controller presentable for presenting a video player. And now we are also using PH live photo view to present live photos that they also select from their library. We also got to uh, take a look at the new way of presenting action sheets, which is with the confirmation dialog modifier in SwiftUI. Hope you liked the video. Bye.